Yeah. Good afternoon, students. Yeah, today I want to conclude coordinate last topic and the fourth unit last topic. Both are both together only single topic, so they are relevant to each other. So that's why I want to continue with both of them at a time. First, so in 13 third unit, it is a 13th topic as per the syllabus copy. I'm talking so asynchronous transfer mode or ATM. So this is an important question uh, according to university examination and uh, internal mid also, your second mid also. So what is the ATM and what are the specifications and uh, how it is used in our communication system? Now we will discuss. Okay. So according to the communication system starts in uh, early 70s and uh, up to early 80s, the ATM technology is a lot of developments are there in between the 10 years. So after the 10 years also, nowadays also it is used in some uh, type of applications. And uh, the standard organizations like uh, Telecommunication Union and Telecommunication Standard Session, uh, ITUT. So these type of standard organizations are governed this body that is uh, ATM. So, Technically, it is simply like a, a packet switching protocol uh, as like a X.25 and a frame relay transmission control protocol like that. So this is also same, same uh, type of network or same type of protocol. So the ATM integrates the multiplexing switching functions and uh, the busty traffic control and uh, control by using a switch. So here, uh, busty bust data movement is done in between the sender and the receiver. So that is the main idea of the asynchronous transfer mode. So what is the synchronous and asynchronous in the sense? For suppose if you take a communication system, like uh, any type of communication system, there are two, two ways. One is serial and parallel. So if you consider a serial communication, must and should be data is not in maybe you know asynchronous because one is fast sender so slow receiver so that possibility is there same way slow sender fast receiver so this is also possible so maximum times asynchronous transfer mode only we prefer so instead of synchronous thing so whenever you want to do synchronization between source and destination so we require a lot of circuitry and it is somewhat hard so that's why we must and should go with the a communication thing that is nothing but asynchronous data, data transfer mode. So that's why this is very, very popular. And uh, the range of this thing is very broad range of communication technology. It is used in devices like uh, uh, ATM, virtual circuit. So end to end connection and point to point connections. And uh, the bandwidth dedicated to it is very, very used. Okay, The bandwidth, what is, is dedicated to your ATM network that is very, very utilized with the proper communication, okay, with the proper uh, usage. Okay, so that's why ATM is somewhat popular. So, but nowadays ATM uh, technology is uh, somewhat lagging. So, because of TCP and the HTTP, HTML, these, these type of things are very, very popular. So, that's why somewhat ATM is lagged nowadays. But according to syllabus, you need to study about the ATM network. So bandwidth is allocated on demand. So it is not a fixed bandwidth in ATM. So on demand, it is going to be allocated. So the various classes of the services meet the bond range of applications. So what are the benefits and we will see one by one. So we will see what are the benefits of ATM and what is the order we are using with respect to ATM. So first one, so you need to think about ATM. <clears throat> first one, benefits of ATM. So ATM benefits. So in this benefits, first thing always you need to think about 
for dynamic bandwidth for busty topic okay so there is a first service what it is provided is dynamic bandwidth that that technology so uses for simply we can use that that one as a our one of the main feature okay so what is the thing dynamic bandwidth for busty topic so that is uh, one of the thing so according to application so according to the uh, size of the data the bandwidth is very very flexible so for example voice is busty okay so same way video is also busty so as both parties are neither speaking at once or sometimes both are going to speak says so in a transmission sometimes both sender and receiver both are going to speak so two participants or three participants at a time also they can speak but sometime only one participant can speak so at that instant so what is the need of wasting uh, bandwidth automatically the bandwidth is going to be decrease so when both the parties are communication uh, participate in the communication at that instant it will increase the bandwidth so that is nothing but what dynamic bandwidth dynamic bandwidth so this is a one of the thing we need to think okay next smaller header so very very little header is there in this so we don't expect uh, you know tcp ip like that so there is a big header is there so due to that big header the overload of the uh, communication is increased the overhead of the communication so that's why uh, to decrease the headache there is nothing but the overhead and the data uh, data losses so this atm can use a small range of packet header so with respect to the data the the efficient use of bandwidth so because automatically if we have a smaller size or smaller header okay due to this smaller header automatically the bandwidth utilization is going to be increase okay so that is the one of the benefit of the second next to can handle mixed network traffic very efficiently okay so this way this is the one of the major uh, advantage so atm benefits so one is handle mixed network traffic mixed network traffic very efficiently okay so that is a very very important aspect you know thing so what is the meaning so variety of packet sizes yes some packets are having 700 mbps so 700 uh, packet uh, 700 bytes some packets are having 1500 bytes uh, or 1500 data packets so like that variable bandwidth or variable pack data sizes are coming into the system or network so at that moment all the network equipment should incorporate and elaborate the software systems with respect to size of the packet so all all, all are going to synchronous at that moment so atm handles these type of problems efficiently with a fixed size of a cell okay always they can use a fixed size cells are used in the network so that's why it is the one of the uh, easiest one so that's why handle mixed network traffic so whether uh, they are coming from different different type of headers or different different type of sources so they can handle easily by using atm next to cell network there is a cell network so this cell network so is uh, very important so the la data loaded into identical cells so you don't have any deviations in between cell and cell so the data rate is very very common so an entire network so that when we transmitted with a complete um, predictability and conformability so predictability and comfort conformability are very very important so you need to predict where is the error is coming so whether error is going to come or not or whether uh, there is a collision or not like that you need to predict the network so like that so we can we can pass our information from one place to another place with respect to cell network so next to class of service support so there is a lot of serv service support
so for atm network there is a extended uh, service support is available so that's why the multimedia traffic and uh, varying throughput latency requirements these all are controlled by easily by your atm network so that's why atm network is very very popular so with respect to its services next to scalability in speed and network size so the scalability is very 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 easy to scalable so in with respect to speed and network size so is and network size in both cases it is very very easy to maintain the entire network so we can maintain the certain network by using its scalability advantages so what is the need so for suppose te by e1 to so whether it is a 622 megabytes per second so that that type of scalability it can provide so you can easily measure the size of the network as well as it, you can easily measure the speed of the network because of its service packets and its service facilities next two common lan and wan architecture both if you do only simple architecture is there so common lan so there is no separate thing is required for wan and lan so common lan and man say wan so uh, because for suppose if you take any tcp ip or something must and should you need to go with the, some deviation in the lan and wan so but uh, in this case in atm so the, all the things are at a same same uh, type of technology they can use same type of performance and the same type of uh, atm structure architecture and everything they can use same common common architecture common lan and wan architecture okay that is these are the atm benefits okay next so we will uh, go with the second part that is nothing but atm these are the benefits of atm what i discuss right now so now we will go with the atm cell format okay so this is the atm cell format so here the cell format consisting so 5 bytes of header and 48 bytes of payload okay 5 bytes of header and 48 total 53 so the atm uh, information is transmitted in the atm in the form of a fixed sized cells okay so already we discussed that one so with long consisting of 5 bytes header and 48 bytes of payload so in this the header and uh, header is once again divided into 5 bytes yes so in the, that 5 bytes so 4 bytes are gfc and uh, 8 bytes are vpi so vci is 16 bytes pti is 3 bytes clp and uh, hec 8 bytes so same way uni and nni so these are the two different headers header is divided into one, one more category that is uh, uni and uh, <clears throat> NNI. So the UNNI uh, UNI header is nothing but so the private network purpose. So that the network is UNI header is for private network of ATM communication. So the endpoints of ATM switches and ATM endpoints switches routers everybody so are undergoing a private consideration that one you called UNI header. So it includes a generic flow control GFC field. That's what that why you called GFC generic flow control. Okay. So that field is there. So that that is a width of four bits. Next NNI. So it is a NNI is used for the communication between ATM switches and it do not include the generic flow control flag or generic flow control. So instead it is includes virtual path identifier vpis so you know nni so vpis are there okay so these are uh, uh, 12 bits occupies first 12 bits of the header so these things these things uh, now we will we'll see so because th that is uh, divided into cells 
so entire cell how it is uh, able to see the cells so now the atm format we will see in the form of cells okay so if you see the cells like this these these are the cells so gfc is there you know first thing but that is a uh, uni so uni in the sense it is for private networks so vpi is for public networks like uh, any kind of communication you can uh, establish so in this case the uni and uh, these things how they are going to work and how they are going to uh, communicate so the adaptation layer how it is going to work simple the standardization and uh, the uses of two types of connections the virtual path connections vpc that is called virtual path connector so which consists of virtual channel connection vccs so in that vcp and vcc so both are very very important so with respect to identifier okay vci virtual connection identifier so what virtual path identifier is required and a virtual connection identifier is also required so with respect to this uh, virtual connection identifier and virtual path identifier so we can uh, transmit the data into the medium so here carrying the signal stream of entire signal stream into virtual path so created end to end so end to end point communication and it does not route the cells in a particular uh, circuit so some virtual circuits it doesn't matter but uh, in generally it is not going to be uh, vary in entire network so once the identifier one one network identifier is established automatically till end of the connection it is not going to be uh, vanish that thing so in case of major failure so all some sometimes uh, the entire network is going to be failure so in particular virtual path routed same way through atm network so previously what path it is followed so in that path only it is going to follow so here the switches connected uh, simply by using both vpis virtual path identifier and vcs so virtual circuit identifiers so path is different and circuit is different so virtual path and virtual connection switches can be have different virtual channel connections so they are also having a different uh, criteria to connect each other so these are handled by means of a single entity so it is a basic uh, operation of uh, straight forward by looking up the connection value and a local translation table is uh, established at the router level so every time table is updated so with respect to the data transmission and the distance with respect to distance so the connection under the new vc uh, vpi vci value connection on a, that link so automatically updations are uh, tabulated into the table now so atm adaptation layer so aal so here only we are covering this thing so actually so working of atm is simple this thing so now atm layers so the atm adaptation layer so aal so what is that aal exactly so the protocol so in detail if you want to read any type of protocol so this is a isolating higher layer protocol from details of atm so because if you don't uh, give the entire information to the your high level abstraction you can use high level abstraction so the conversion of the data into cells and segments into 48 byte cell payloads so because our atm network consisting of cell sizes the payload size is 48 already you know so this this payload data size is 48 here also payload data size is 48 so that 48 and 48 so the al protocol okay uh, accepts the transmission from upper layer services and help them in a mapping applications voice data to atm cells okay so whether we want to communicate with voice and data so this this is very very important so atm adaptation layer so that one you called aal so in this so what are the things so one is management plane and one is control plane and user plane so same way higher layer some higher layers from higher layers in the sense application layer and session layer 
so from that how it is abstracted the data so next to atm adaptation layer so it is there in between them and atm layer after that and after that there is a physical layer so this is the format of this aal so the layer management and plane management are done in a layer layer and plane okay so like this uh, the entire data is managed so what is the physical layer so in, in generally the physical layer is responsible for what in any case so the medium dependent transmission divided into parts okay physical medium dependent sub layer transmission and uh, bit level and signal level or electrical electrical signal level transmission is done at a physical layer so it converts cells into bit stream what is the role of physical layer so atm cells you got that cells into bit stream it will convert so it controls the transmission and the receipt of bit in the physical medium so in physical medium so automatically it will control the transmission and receipt and it can track the atm cell boundaries okay so what are the boundaries of atm cell that is nothing but what is the start point what is the end point like that it can next looks for the package of cells into appropriate type of frames okay so this is the role of your atm physical layer so then what is the atm layer so the atm layer handles the transmission switching congestion control and uh, header processing sequential delivery and it is responsible for simultaneous sharing and a virtual circuit uh, switching and uh, physical link uh, uh, tear down phases and uh, establishment phases and everything so here uh, the simple uh, thing is the multiplexing and uh, the passing of the networks through the atm network known as a cell relay so simply that that one is called cell relay so it is making cell relay of vpi and vci information so that is the main role of our atm layer so next to atm applications so what are the application so these two things only you need to concentrate sir so we need to draw this diagram and we need to concentrate on these two things so atm applications what are the atm applications if you see uh, the atm applications so these are the atm uh, vans are there so it can be used as a van to send cells over the long distance router servicing okay long distance communication purpose you can use these things so next uh, multimedia virtual private networks and managed uh, services for that purpose atm network is used maximum times nowadays also for maintenance purpose atm network <coughs> network is used so because it is a light and it is very very fast as compared to tcp ip so next uh, for multimedia purposes maximum times we are going to use this thing so especially for video audio transmissions and uh, frame relay backbone so what is the purpose of frame relay backbone in the sense so simple uh, the relay services of the cell so always the relay uh, cell must and should be divided into some parts and the cell must and should be added with uh, its header so and uh, one uh, vpi to another vpi you must and should transmit the data so once vci to another vci how it is virtual circuit identifier with respect to that identification number how it is related so that is a uh, taken care by frame relay and backbone okay. so these are the things next to uh, residential <coughs> um, broadband networks so for that for that purpose it can use atm is a choice provides that networking infrastructure for establishment and residential broadband services in in search of highly scalable solutions so whenever you require that much high speed network so you can use atm so next to carrier infrastructure so for telephone and a private line networks for all that purposes it can be used best example is sonnet sdh so these are the fiber infrastructure so by building in a building you can if you want to make certain fiber infrastructure so this type of atm networks can be used so the some ad additional important topic that is uh, we only added okay so that is extra uh, into the syllabus that is frame relay so what is the frame relay the frame relay is the packet so generally it is x.25 already we studied 
so frame relay in our first unit so that one only some features we added so once again here it is mentioned characteristics of frame relay so this one already done sir so features of frame relay and uh, how it is going to work so permanent virtual circuit pvc and switched virtual circuits svc so that is divided into two categories so this this topic we we covered in a first unit last part okay, the frame relay and its format okay so once we go this thing so that is the end of what so this this is a some important question maximum times it is asked what is the jetter how it is going to be controlled so in networking so there is a some disturbance yes so jetter in the sense so for suppose when you are watching your movie, uh, tv so you got some some sometimes so there is a fluctuation in the screen sometimes there is a some disturbance some uh, blur blur is coming into the system so such type of thing generally you call it is a some error so what type of error that one so during the data transfer it can be caused by several factors including network congestion collision of as well as collision data loss and the signal interference and uh, sometimes it is uh, with respect to the latency and the delay between uh, transmitter and receiver the transmission and receiving or suppose live program is coming on so at that instant so there is a network is somewhat slow so at that instant so that is the packets are going to be lagged or the packets are sometime uh, they are going come coming very fastly so that experience uh, of the amount of latency so what you what you observed in the internet that is in milliseconds range only generally it is measured in milliseconds or uh, microseconds range so in real time communication also uh, in voice and gaming applications it is uh, occurred so when you when you observe so th these type of things are in your cell phone also when you are playing a game so suddenly there is a struck in between screen to screen so for suppose you are uh, playing certain game some running race or uh, we are playing some need for speed such type of games so there is a some sort of jitter is coming so that jitter so you can measure the jitter so madam hello ఎప్పుడు మేడం ఏ సెక్షన్ బి సెక్షన్ సి సెక్షన్ నేను ఇంకా అసలు ఏమీ వేయలేదు ఎక్కడ ఎక్కడ వేయాలి అందులో వేస్తున్నాం మనం ఓకే ఓకే వేస్తా వేస్తా ఓకే 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 సో దిస్ జెట్టర్ కెన్ బి observed in any type of communication system so generally in video and voice communications so the worst producing additional delays so due to that jitter so it can produce somewhat uh, extra delay okay so that that is the uh, one of the very very important thing so we need to prepare so the standard way of okay compensate the network with jitter is to use a buffer so generally you need to use buffer that stores the data before it is used such a few seconds of an audio or video clip so in your mobile phone that is only happened yes every time so <clears throat> for suppose the internet speed is now 100 mbps so that means your video must and should come very fastly so sometimes uh, the network speed is only in kbps so whenever it is in kbps so automatically the buffer is going to rotate 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 so your youtube video or something is going to rotate 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 like that so at that moment what it is doing so it is buffering the data so once buffering completion so then automatically it will play with a required speed so that is that is so due to jitter so when you are introducing certain jitter into your communication system so automatically it will increase certain delay okay but it improves the quality so that is the purpose so the uh, computer few seconds receive any packets lost due to the jitter so while buffers are effective solution for jitters so they must be extremely small when used in real time application such as long gaming and video video compressing techniques and video processing techniques digital image processing 
and everywhere. So this jitter is very, very important. So if the buffer is too large, greater than 10 milliseconds, uh, it will cause the noticeable delay. So there is a, some delay. So must and should occur. So that's why the buffer size also very, very less. So you don't put a one minute after one minute stream only you, you must and should play. So like that, you don't put any buffer. So if you put like that, so the buffer size is very, very high in Kodaks. So Kodaks like a VLC media player, so Windows media player. So like that, you have some Kodaks. So in that, uh, the buffer sizes are somewhat less. But if you take your YouTube or something, the buffer size is at least 20 milliseconds like that. So after every 20 milliseconds, it will stop. And once again, it will load. Once again, it will go like that. So next, one more topic here you need to bother. That is nothing but uh, very important topic, tunneling. What is the tunneling? These are some definitions like things, uh, what I am covering. So tunneling is a protocol that allows the uh, secure movement of data from one network to another network. Okay, so from one network to another network, if, if you want to process or if you want to uh, link your data to another network, so tunneling is the one of the very finest technology. So tunneling uh, involves allowing private network communications to be sent across the public network. So at that moment, you can use tunneling. So the encapsulation of process allows the data packets into higher order packets. That is the nature of public uh, network. And uh, actually, it provides the packets allowing with them and process through notice. So this is the tunneling process is very, very important. So you know, uh, there are various protocols that use tunneling occurring. So where it is used, tunneling, exactly. So the point to point network tunneling is used. So PT, PPTP, so generally. P, P, T, P, point to point network tunneling protocol. So that is, uh, it keeps the priority of the data secure when it is being communicated over a network. So next to, uh, one more thing is there, L2, TP. So L2, TP, layer two tunneling protocol, layer two tunneling protocol. So this is uh, one of the tunneling protocol involving combination of using PPTP and layer two forwarding. So these are the very, very uh, important topics. Uh, sometimes uh, they are going to ask in two mass question as what is the meaning of tunneling? Explain. Okay. And uh, what is the tunneling protocol? Explain or give you an example. So same way, what is meant by jitter and uh, explain. So you need to uh, remember the some definitions. So you, you make some list of things. So one is throughput. One is latency. One is congestion, one, one congestion control. Okay, so QoS quality of service. So next to tunneling, zitter. So these type of things must and should you need to uh, keep in your mind, and uh, they are going to ask in a two mass questions as a short answer. Okay. So now I want to go with the uh, fourth unit. I want to end the fourth unit. That is the end of the third unit, sir. So now I want to go with the fourth unit. <clears throat> so already I sent you notes also for these two. So yesterday we completed user data gun protocol and the differences between. So this one only you have. So the ATM adaptation layers. Okay, AAL protocol. So this one uh, we just discussed this thing. So the ATM tunneling and the ATM adaptation protocols. So with respect to our network. Uh, we are going to divide into some sub subroutine categories, okay, some subroutines and virtual LAN, so VCs, VCLs and everything. So what is the need? So why adaptation layer required one more type of thing? So AL, AL is, it is a software layer and uh, it is digitized wise video or computer data, so makes them into suitable for transmission over ATM network. So the transmissions can be fixed variable data. So the AL uh, provides certain things, certain things in the sense. So the services, one is segmentation and reassembly. Okay, automatically first it will do the entire big packet into some segments. So and after that it can divide into 
uh, the, it can uh, reassemble into same one packet. So that is done in you know, one of the aspect. Next second thing, handling of transmission errors. So one more one more uh, ATM adaptation layer role is so handling of transmission errors. And next to handling of lost and misinserted cell conditions. Okay. So timing and flow control. So these are the four four things it can responsible. So the first thing is segmentation and reassembly of data. Same way, second thing, handling of transmission errors. And third one is handling of last and mis misinserted cell conditions. And the last one is timing and flow control. So for this purpose only, the ATM uh, AL layer is provided. This layer has two sub layers. So there are two sub layers are possible for this. So we will see one by one. So these two sub layers, what are that? So convergence sub layer and segmentation and reassembly sub layer. So there are two things. So so some networks that need AL services or gigabit Ethernet, internet protocol, frame relay, SONET, SDH, and UMTS and wireless communication purpose. So these things are available. So here AL network and AL network. So in between them, ATM network is responsible to send packet to packet. So here AL is responsible for segmentation, error control, and flow control, and the transmission of the data and inserting of data. So the AL protocols are um, divided into some AL type 0, AL type 1, AL type 2 like that. So we have some types. So here the AL type 0 is the simplest service that provides the direct interface to the ATM services without any restrictions. So these cell, okay, the cells are called raw cells containing 48 bytes of payload. So we already know. So it always the special fields and uh, uh, it, it lacks of guarantee and uh, the interoperability is also very, very important thing. So this is somewhat uh, less compatibility. So as compared to a AL type one. So this service AL type one is somewhat, uh, it is syn synchronous and uh, connection oriented traffic and it supports for a uh, the bitrate between the uh, two endpoints of ATM link and uh, AL1 cell contains four bits of sequence number. So due to the sequence number, rearrangement of the data is very, very useful. So the sequence number portion and 48 bytes of payload field. Okay. So four bits of sequence number. So four bits of sequence number, a four bit of sequence number protection. For sequence number also, you need to protect. Hello? Hello? Yes, Chapandi? No, Chapandi. Yes? Ibal Gada, me project is a sala, me project this coaches, who can see a Landra, Pulundra, Apanlon and Narga, the Mirandura. Oh, very good. Sir, Nishnachan Chandi. Okay, so then here the services are uh, simply 4 bit of sequence number and 4 bits of sequence number production and uh, remaining 48 bits are payload field. So that is the network what you established. See, so this one. So AL1 and uh, this is uh, of, of the ATM. So you know already ATM consisting of 5 bytes of header and 48 bytes of uh, payload. So this payload once again divided into some uh, SAR and CS. So the 47 uh, bytes in this 47 bytes. So the header field consisting of a CI number that is nothing but virtual circuit identification number and virtual circuit identifier protection number. So both the things are there. So SN means sequence number, SNP means sequence number protection. So both are required. So for data transmission. So then SAR header is consisting 4 plus 4. Okay, the SAR header consisting 4 plus 4 bits. So it is nothing but the benefits of sequence number. 
simply the maintain the order of the bits so snp is nothing but the protection of the first field uh, the first to three bits automatically correct the sn so automatically sequential number is corrected so when any error is uh, occurred so then the last um, bit is the parity that detects the error overall eight bits so in that overall eight bits so is, is there any error or nothing so it will check so then al type 2 so this al type 2 is also one of the uh, major technique so here the main fields are cid and uh, it is a 8 bit cid field it consisting of the channel for shortest packet and li so the li field is indicates the how much uh, of the final packet is in the data so that is nothing but last index so or least index so simply so last index in the sense what simply when when the uh, length indicator so it is simply it, is, it indicates the length so cid means channel identifier so always it is identify the channel so the channel identification is done so in this cid and uh, these all things so next to uh, the header file consisting of cid li and uh, ppt so what is this packet payload type ppt means packet payload type here ppt so next to ui so user to user indication so from user to user how the data is receiving and everything are indicated by this thing next to hec header error control so the header error control so can control the data uh, any errors are there that in, that can indicate next to sf the start field so sf means start of the field okay so these are the main things so what is the ppt field ppt field can do so defines the type of the packet the the ppt field can define that is packet payload type it can define and ui so the ui field can used by the end to end user user to user indication so whether data is received or not like that hec so the hec field header error control is used for the last five bits used for correct the error in the header so sf what is the sf means the sf means start field yes the only overhead at the asr layer is that start field so except these things all are useful for our communication so then the last final one so in this category is a al type three or four okay so generally both are same so with a smaller interruption so al three and four so this includes the services of variable data uh, or bit stream so they can use variable data rates and bit streams also it is suitable for both connection and connection oriented protocols so asynchronous traffic as well as so previously it is synchronous but it is uh, useful for asynchronous also so connectionless and traffic so these atm cells contain a four bytes of header okay already we know that uh, four bytes of header is there so the cpi uh, defines the always the cpi common part identifier so next to btag so that is beginning tag beginning tag btag means beginning tag so this beginning tag indicates or uh, beginning tag is for uh, the purpose of when the data so repeated each cell of the identify the cells belong to the same packet or not so next to b a size b a size so that is nothing but simple b a means buffer allocation b a means buffer allocation size so the two byte b a field tells the receiver what size of buffer is needed for the coming data so for a coming data you must not change your buffer so i will uh, bring this type of data so like that so next to al alignment means al alignment so one byte alignment field include and to make the rest of the trailer four bytes long so remaining all are four bytes trailer bits okay next to e tag what is the e tag so e tag is end, ending of or end tag simple ending tag or end tag same way you have b tag beginning tag e tag means end tag okay like that we have both so b tag and end tag so then 
the length so l means length so the length is 2 bytes l field indicates the length of the data unit so like this uh, the sar field can be divided into so several uh, parts so we see this thing so cs header and cs trailer sar so st and sn m mid so st is segment uh, type sn is sequence number and uh, mid multiplexing identifier so li is length identifier already you know so crc is for a error detection purpose okay so error detection purpose we studied in a second unit so st so what is the st two bits st identifier that is uh, uh, specifies the position of the segment in the message so beginning 0 0 so middle 0 1 so if it is end so 1 0 so sn is the four bit field and defines the sequence number uh, to the order of the bits so next mid so mid is a 10 bit field so it uh, identifies the cell coming from the different data flow and multiplexed so li is already you know that is a uh, last identifier or that is a uh, uh, length identifier simply the list identifier or length identifier crc is a 10 bit code uh, of the trailer crc is for error detection purpose so the last one so al type 5 okay al type 5 so this al type 5 consisting so total how many sir so total five types are there al1 al2 al2 3 al4 so with respect to these all things see so from type 2 type 1 so like that so type 0 so type 0 to type 5 total six things are there so these six things so the final one is this one so al5 provides the, the similar services of al4 by al4 uh, 3 by 4 but with a specified header information so it was originally named as simple and efficient adaptation layer so that one efficient adaptation layer so efficient and simple simple and efficient adaptation layer SCAL seal so it is used in a number of areas like uh, internet protocol ip over atm and uh, ethernet over atm and uh, switched mul multi megabit data services smds so in such cases it is used so this is the uh, format of that uh, header so uu is nothing but channel identifier and uh, cpi is common part identifier and l is the length crc is the error detection purpose you can use so this is the end of your fourth unit so up to fourth unit completed so today evening i will give the assignment questions so for unit number three and unit number four i hope it doesn't give for unit number three a given can anyone respond unit number three is given for you assignment questions so i will give once again so if we, I, I, I already given i don't want to give so unit number four so i will give today assignment questions so you submit in the moodle so before 25th okay after five days okay, before 25th uh, you complete that assignment questions i will give only four questions so for from unit number four okay and uh, in this week only i will give all unit wise questions and the university question papers and everything i will give to group okay so then now you need to give the attendance yes yes tell me now oh, istan the assignment to for third unit and the fourth unit i will give so you submit them so third unit you submit before 23 fourth unit you submit before 25 so like that both that's why i'm telling both for both of them to oh no 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 unnai meeku but na condition where unnadi andukoni inga migitha ayithe em levu kada vere vaalla ipudu pogo pani ayipothundi kada meeku kuda you completed one work na that's why okay yeah so respond roll calls so 1 to 10 that is 96 to 96 to 105 96 to 105 respond your roll calls
Yeah. <clears throat> So 96 is present. Next to 102. Next to 105. 104. 100. 103. So 97. Then 115 up to 115 up to 115 just to respond in a message only so i am unable to hear this thing okay so up to 115 113 okay so 115 up to 108 also present okay so 109 then yes so up to 125 up to 125 so 119 Then up to one thirty five. One twenty six and one thirty one. One thirty two. Then one thirty three, one thirty four. One twenty five, one thirty two. 133. So then, yes, done. Next up to 140. Up to 140. 137. 138. <coughs> so 136 also. Okay, done. So next, so you can you leave the meeting, sir. So lateral entry up to 10. 301, 303, lateral entry up to 10. Next to 302 also. Okay. So lateral entry up to 20. Lateral entry numbers up to 20. Three. Yeah, last up to last. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 44 members present. Okay. Thank you. So leave the meeting. So I have another class. So for that, I will. Thank you. Yes. Tell me. Lab internal, maybe if it is possible, I will conduct in online or otherwise uh, I will, somebody will conduct. Depends, depends upon time. Okay. I will, I will inform on Monday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Somebody joined right now. Who is that? Yeah, tell your number, Nana. Hello. Oh, three two zero. Okay. Yeah, leave the meeting. So I have another class. So don't be in the meeting. Hello, Philip.